section 7-2, example 2. So suppose 65% of all Chicago area specialty doctors refuse to make appointments for children whose primary medical coverage is Medicaid. So in a weird way, our success is refusing appointments. So in real life, that's not a success, but that's what we're measuring. So 65% do not get medical appointments. So 0.65 is my P. So isn't that, I mean, it's terrible, right? All these children are being declined appointments because they're using Medicaid. Um, so let's suppose we're gonna take random samples of 273. So N is 273. Um, of specialty doctor's offers, offices, and we're going to call and ask to make an appointment, and we're going to keep track if they're giving us an appointment or not. So let's find the distribution. So to find distribution, we need to check those requirements. So NP and NQ. So NP will be 273 times 0.65, and NQ will be 273 times 1 minus 0.65, which is 0.35. So for NP, I get 177.45, and for NQ, I get 95.55. Since they're both at least 10, the requirements are met. We can use the normal curve. If they're smaller than 10, then we just can't do anything. It means we probably need more data. So now that I know it's normal, let's find the mean and standard deviation. So P hat is normal. The average is just P or 0.65. So on average, my samples should be 65%. And then the standard deviation will be square root P, Q over N. So we'll take the square root. of P, 0.65 times Q, 0.35 divided by 273, and make sure they're all in the square root. And we get a standard deviation of 0 0.028868, because I want five digits. All right, so what's the probability that we get the exact value of the true population proportion in our sample? So we get exactly 65%. It's a lot of words, but it's just saying what's the chance we get exactly 65%? And we've gone over this, it's basically zero, right? It's not exact, but should be close. What is the expected error of our point estimate? So we learned expected error is within those two standard deviations that we've been talking about a lot. So we will do two times the standard deviation, 28, 0 0.028668, two times 0 0.028868, and we get expected error of about 0.057736. So basically plus or minus, like when we say within, it could be a little over or under, that's what plus or minus means. So plus or minus 0.557% from that original value of 65. Um, so let's see what happens to expected error if I change the sample size. So the expected error changes because my standard deviation changes. So expected error is within two standard deviations. Um, but now that we have a sample size of 521, we get a new value for the standard deviation. Bigger samples will have less variation. So let's see what that does to the standard deviation. So square root of P times Q, 0.65, times 0.35, and then we'll divide it by our new n of 521. So we'll do the square root of 0.65 times 0.35, divided by 521, and we get a smaller standard deviation of 0.02. 
0896. And so then our expected error is within two of these. So our expected error is within two standard deviations. So two times 020896. It probably rounds a little bit differently, so let's just type it out. 020896. So about 0 0.041792. So now it's basically within 0.418%. So we're going to get better estimates because there's less error. So our samples should be closer to the true value because my expected error is smaller. And comparing to the 0.577. So what are some key points from this section? Um, when we're estimating P by P hat, it's typical that they're exactly equal, the probability that P hat equals P. The probability that they're exactly equal is pretty much zero. Squiggly lines mean about zero, but probably close. And the best way to decrease error is to increase our this has been true all semester, sample size. So we saw the error decrease from part C to part D as we increase sample size. So if we're getting too much error, it means we probably need a larger sample.